Welcome. In this video, we discuss optoelectronics, specifically optical displays. Optoelectronics is a study and application that deals with changing electrical energy into light, as well as converting light into electrical energy. In this context, the word light not only includes visible light, but also invisible forms of radiation, such as ultraviolet, infrared, gamma rays, and x-rays. A display, in general terms, is a device used to show information in some sort of a visual manner. The segment display is one in which the display module has a number of different segments that can be turned on or off in order to show the desired character. Most of the time, the segments are either made of liquid crystals or LEDs. These displays are typically only capable of showing alphanumeric characters or digits and in forms of 7-segment, 14-segment, and 16-segment variants. Many of the more common places to find these segment displays include calculators, digital alarm clocks, and microwave oven displays. Another display type is a two-dimensional display, more commonly known as a video display. These displays are generally, but not always, larger in size and cover a full area, oftentimes in shapes of a rectangle or a square. These displays are used for presenting videos and can be found in applications including computer monitors, television sets, oscilloscopes, smartphones, and handheld gadgets. These two-dimensional displays are available in a variety of technology flavors. The CRT, or cathode ray tube, is a type of vacuum tube that manipulates a stream of intense, high-energy electrons that are shot from an electron gun onto a fluorescent screen to display images. An LED display is a flat panel display, which uses an array of light-emitting diodes as pixels for displaying images. Organic light-emitting diode, or OLED, displays are made by placing a series of organic, thin films between two conductors. When an electric current is applied, a bright light is emitted. Therefore, OLED displays do not require a backlight. In a liquid crystal display, or LCD, pixels are switched on or off electronically using liquid crystals to rotate polarized light. Liquid crystals do not emit light themselves. Therefore, a backlight or light reflector is used for producing the images. There are multiple methods in which liquid crystal display modules are illuminated. The reflective LCD type uses ambient light rather than a backlight, and it involves a reflective mirror layer. Ambient light passes through the LCD cell from the front side and is reflected by the mirror back to the viewer. The transmissive LCD type uses the light provided from the display's backlight, and the transflective LCD type uses both transmissive and reflective characteristics. These displays contain an integrated backlight and a light reflector. A plasma display, or PDP, which stands for Plasma Display Panel, uses a pulse of electricity to force a gas, which is sealed in a subpixel to form a plasma, and as a result, discharge ultraviolet light. This ultraviolet light, in turn, causes a phosphor-coated subpixel to flash visible light through the front glass panel. A red, green, and blue subpixel together form one pixel. Each subpixel can be activated multiple times per second. The last display technology type that we'll discuss is called Electronic Paper Display, or EPD. Instead of using a backlight to emit light, electronic paper displays reflect light like paper. Because electronic paper displays are based on electrophoresis, which is the movement of electrically charged molecules in an electric field, Many electronic paper technologies can hold static images indefinitely without electricity. For today's demonstration, we'll be examining just a small sample size of the large variety of display choices that DigiKey offers. We will also have a demonstration using a Raspberry Pi hat display. I'll start out by showing some LCD modules. This is a small yet high-density LCD 16-bit color graphic display module. It has a 0.96-inch diagonal dimension and a resolution of 160 by 80. It uses a four-wire SPI interface and also comes with a built-in micro SD slot. This is a large color LCD module measuring 10.1 inches on the diagonal with an integrated capacitive touch panel. It has a resolution of 1024 by 600 with a color depth of 6-bit or 262K colors. This is a transmissive LCD 24-bit color display module. It has a resolution of 320 by 220 and measures 3.5 inches on the diagonal. This is a transflective liquid crystal display module. It has a white LED backlight along with black graphics. This is a 2.15 inch 
128 by 64 LCD module with RGB backlighting and touch buttons. This is a Raspberry Pi hat display that we will use during our demonstration here in a few minutes. For OLED displays, I have two devices. The first is a small, flexible grayscale display. It measures 1.8 inches on the diagonal and is less than 0.5 millimeters thick. It has a 4-bit grayscale resolution, a 3-wire SPI interface, and as you can see, it's very flexible. This is the other OLED display. It's a bit larger, measuring 5.5 inches on the diagonal. Its graphics are yellow in color with 256 by 64 dots. For the Raspberry Pi hat display demonstration, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus loaded with Raspbian Sketch, which is the latest release, and a Raspberry Pi Display GFX hat by Pi Maroni. First, we need to download and demo the firmware and examples. Go to this link, click on Download, click on Download the zip, and save the file. Open the folder and open the README file. I'm using WordPad. Find the full installation link and use it on the Raspberry Pi. Before powering up the Raspberry Pi, first attach the display hat. With the Raspberry Pi up and running, open a terminal and key in the installation instructions. The installation process will take a few minutes. When the install completes, close the terminal window. Navigate to Pimeroni, GFX Hat, Examples, and I'm going to open the menus option, uh, menu dash options.py. I'll double click, execute in terminal. As you can see, the display lights up and I'm going to touch the enter button at the bottom and the display will go to green. And I will hit the up arrow to red. I'll go down, two to blue, and there's a purple setting, and then the white setting is the last one there. And on the terminal, I'm going to hit key in control C to cancel, and then I'm going to double click on hello-world.py, execute in terminal, and we can see hello world. So I'm going to hit cancel and now I'm going to modify this file. I'm going to right click, open with Pi 3, and this is the code. I'm going to come down here and change the text from hello world to digikey. And I'm going to change the font size from 38 to 50. I will save. Close this. And then again, I will double click and execute in terminal. And we will now see, now we see DigiKey there. So as you can see, operating this display hat is quite straightforward. I hope you enjoyed this video from DigiKey. Thanks for watching.